Hi everyone, I'm Susan Harrow, media coach, marketing strategist, and author of the best-selling book, Sell Yourself Without Selling Your Soul, published by HarperCollins, and CEO of PureSecrets.com. And today I want to talk about sound bites. First, just what they are, and then to share with you a couple of really great ones from famous people and from also from people who have been in my your signature soundbite course or who have been my clients. So what are sound bites first? I love when Mark Twain was asked about what a maxim is, he said, define that, and he said it's a minimum of sound to a maximum of sense. So sound bites are really just your key phrases. They're not mysterious. They're your key phrases. They're fascinating facts. They're anecdotes. They're stories. They're vignettes. They're um, stories, statistics, facts, anecdotes, analogies, acronyms. And you have a mix of these. So it's not like sound bites are your whole conversation. They're woven skillfully into the conversation. But one thing that's really key in a sound bite is that it's packed with meaning and that it is memorable and repeatable. Whether it's a story or a fact or just a one liner, you want that to be embedded in the memory of the person and also in their hearts so they really feel it. So I was just looking over one of my very old transcripts and what phrase did I find in there? Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Muhammad Ali, describing himself. He was his own best publicist, you know? So I float like a butterfly, I sting like a bee. I mean, that was such a great description of what he does in the boxing ring, right? And now we've heard that hundreds of times since he just passed. So that's, the, that's a really great one-liner. Um, so that really sticks in your mind. Now, I want to give you one that's maybe not quite as memorable, but that is something that I really loved. And this is by um, Amos Oz. So I'm going to take a peek, quick peek over here by, um, in, this, in my document. I, I was um, listening to him. He's an Israeli author, Amos Oz, and he was... And I heard him speak a while back, and he's so passionate and so vibrant and, and very lovely. And he said, um, I thought that my book, which is called A Tale of Love and Darkness, would only be of interest to people in my village or my vintage. But I found that the more local I was, the more universal my message. That's a different kind of soundbite. I mean, that's a little bit more intellectual, but I really like that phrase in there, too, from my village or my vintage, right? That's the part that may stick in your mind. And then... Um, here's what he said about the soundbite. He says, I love Israel in the moments when I don't like it. And I love this because this really captures his whole philosophy of loving his land and yet fighting for peace. So it's kind of an oxymoron, um, fighting for peace. Like that's kind of that, that in your head, it's like, what? You know, so that's what partly makes it memorable. It's kind of a little kooky. Right? You go, the two jarring ideas. So that's, I, I thought that was really powerful. And then another one that's on the lighter side, for example, from my clients who were also in this seminar participants, Kelly, Kitty and Jennifer O'Neill. They're authors of the book called Funky Shui. Great name, right? That's kind of a pun in itself, right? A soundbite in itself. And uh, they say, they define Funky Shui as less about wind chimes and more about snow globes. So that's their soundbite for describing their book, which you should have, by the way, if you're describing your book, you do want a kind of a one-liner that, that tells what your book is about. And then the soundbite that I loved, which was in their romance chapter about your bedroom, is a single white rosebud in a glass vase represents chastity, so you don't have to. Okay, so that's funny, it's cute, and you definitely get a visual image. So that's when we're talking about sound bites too, is, is that you want a sound bite that gives you a feeling, uh, makes you see something, uh, hear it, remember it. Then another one is from my client, um, who also took my Your Signature Soundbite course, Marty Friedman. He does private one-on-one -on -one coaching. He did private one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. He's a successful management consultant of 25 years, and now he's also ex an expert in men in marriage. And he says, 
the biggest mistake, and I'm reading this from my computer, right? So you've seen my eyes move over here. The biggest mistake men in marriage make is, let me start over. Um, oh, by the way, if you're recording too, um, and it can be edited, you just say retake, right? So the biggest mistake men in marriage make is in relationships because they think of their marriage like a refrigerator. They expect it to run by itself, plug it in, and go. So that kind of sums up in a few words the really essence, the, uh, the essential difference between men and women, right? It's not going to plug and play a relationship, right? Okay, let me see if I have any other ones. I think that was it. I think that's, I think that's good for now in terms of those are more one-liners, and one, another one-liner that um, a client and I came up with, Kelly, um, uh, oh my God, I can't believe I'm, I'm forgetting her last name. So when that happens, you just need to go on. So she uh, owned astrology.com and then sold it to iVillage. And one of the things that we came up with is astrology is a guide, not a god. So that's something that was a line that was so good that any person that was introducing her when she was doing a TV show stole it right? So you want to have these really great lines. Hopefully you don't want the media to steal them because lots of times they do. And then you have to uh, come up with another great line because they've already taken your best one. But anyway, that's such a great line. Astrology is a guide, not a god, that it does get stolen. You want to have your sound bites so they're stealable, right? But the point is that if, even if the journalist doesn't steal it, you want your audience to steal it and take it for their own. So... Um, that's it for some soundbite examples. Those were pretty much one-liners. You had uh, the, the one from Muhammad Ali that was the one-liner describing himself. The other one from Amos Oz that was a little bit more of his relationship with his country. And then Kitty and, um, and her sister at the O'Neill's at Funky Shui. That was kind of like funny. And then you've got Marty who is a, kind of a great great analogy. So you've got all of these different types. So you can see the range of sound bites where you have this kind of way that you have to explore and be creative, have some fun, humor, uh, pathos, whatever that is that will move your audience. So think about those kinds of things that you can weave into the, the conversation that will be memorable or make people feel. So this is Susan Harrow, media coach, marketing strategist and author of Sell Yourself Without Selling Your Soul and CEO of PRSecrets.com, inviting you to my website where I have lots of free things. One of the other free things that we have is um, the 50 best media contacts. So if you are ready to do media, go ahead and download that. It's right on the homepage at PRSecrets.com. And also we have a lot of great things under goodies. So I will look forward to connecting you soon to you soon and if you have a great soundbite please send it to me at manager at prsecretstore.com mgr at prsecretstore.com I would love to hear your great soundbite